Morning, Sobin. Good morning, Sumit. Yeah, uh, am I audible? Yes, yes, you are. Okay, uh, and just just check the video. I'm just switching on the video and yeah. let me know if I'm visible also. Yeah. Am I visible now? Yes, yes. Okay. Very clear. You we'll start by ten o'clock. Okay. Aishirya Tom is here. Aishirya?
Adia, shall we start? So good morning, everyone. I welcome each and every one of you uh, to the last day of the National E-Conference. So there will be four talks today. Uh, first one on Bimal Kaur by Mr. Sumit Ray. Second one on um, Cyprian Equency by Mr. Febu George. Third one on Wilson Harris by Mr. Akilesh Uteyabanu. And fourth one on John Rawls, R.K. Lakshman, and Sahir Ludhyanvi by Mr. Chari J.K. So before inviting Mr. Sumit Ray to make the talk on Bimal Kaur, I ask Aishwarya Tom to say a few words on Mr. Sumit Ray. Hello? I think she has a network problem. Uh, Subin, it's okay. Like, uh, I can just straight away go to my talk. And I don't think I need an introduction. I mean, it's enough for people to know that... Uh, I teach at the University of North Bengal. Uh, that should be enough. <laughs> okay, okay. I, I will make yeah. this small introduction. Uh, okay. So, oh, she, has, she has come. She's there. She has come? Yes. Aishwarya Tom? Sorry, sir. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I am so excited. Ashwarya, you have to unmute yourself. And if there's a network problem, it's okay. I think we can just move ahead with the uh, thing lecture. Oh, now she has come. Oh, she's, she's, okay. Yeah, joined from other. Yes. Good morning, sir. I am so excited to have uh, the opportunity to introduce uh, Professor Sumit Ray, sir who is here to take a session on Bengali writer and novelist Bimalkar. Mr. Subitre is an assistant professor of English working at the University of North Bengal. He has been active in the teaching field since 2004. Poetry, Indian writing in English, post-colonial literature, translation studies, popular culture and eco-critical studies are his thrust areas. He is also an eminent writer, and some of his works are A Father's Worry, Book Review of Borders, Globalization and Identity, and Two Poems. We are grateful for his presence among us today. Without further delay, please join me in welcoming Mr. Sumitre. Over to you, sir. Thank you so much, Ashwarya, and uh, a very good morning to all of you. Uh, I would like to thank the organizers of this uh, wonderful conference, especially Subin, who uh, literally forced me into speaking on this particular topic. And uh, I would also like to congratulate the organizers of Devmatha College, uh, who have actually come up with this idea, uh, you know, of... Uh, it's a very unique team. I mean, I haven't come across uh, such a unique thing in all these years of my teaching experience. And uh, the writer I've been asked to speak on is uh, Bimal Kar. And uh, to be very frank, when Subin first suggested that I have to speak on Bimal Kar, I was a bit surprised. I'll tell you why I was surprised. Because uh, Bimal Kar is someone who, you know, uh, yes, he's a, he's a prolific writer, as uh, I, I'll be telling you. Uh, a bit about his works. But, uh, you know, when we talk about Bengali literature and when we talk about the greats of Bengali literature, uh, Bimalkar is not someone who immediately comes to mind. You know, when, when we talk about Bengali literature, then you you come across names like Tagore, uh, Sharat Chandra, Bankim Chandra, uh, Manik Bandopadhyay, Tarashankar Bandopadhyay, you know, all these writers, they come to mind. 
uh, even Sunil Gangopadhyay, Shishendu Mukherjee, these are all the writers that come to mind. And uh, why I'm telling you that he doesn't come to mind immediately? Uh, because uh, on the 19th September, 19th September was his 100th birthday. And uh, it might not be ca- come as a surprise to you, but it definitely came as a surprise to me that there was, I did not find a single post or a single program to commemorate his 100th birthday. And here we are uh, kind of celebrating his writing in a college in Kerala. Just imagine uh, how he's treated in Bengal right now. Uh, there was only an article the week before his birthday uh, in Ananda Vaza Patrika. Otherwise, I haven't seen anything, you know, on uh, Bimalkar as such. Uh, even while doing a bit of research on Bimalkar, I found that there was not a single article written in English specifically on Bimalkar. You know, I mentioned Bankim Chanda, I mentioned Tagore. You'll find plenty of articles on these writers. But I did not find a single article written in English on Bimalkar. Okay, and even Bengali articles, I didn't find that much. So whatever... I'm going to speak on is uh, the little uh, information that I've got from some of the Bengali articles and some of the newspaper articles that were written on him. Um, Now, before I move on to Bimalkar, just to give you an idea of how prolific a writer he was, uh, let me just, uh, you know, tell you that uh, he wrote almost uh, 20 novels and innumerable short stories uh, he wrote uh, essays. Uh, he even wrote uh, detective stories for children uh, in which he created uh, this uh, kind of detective character called Kikira, whose full name is actually Kinkar uh, Kishore Roy, but he's uh, like abbreviated as Kikira. Um, many of his stories uh, and even novels have been made into films. Okay, I'm not sure how familiar you are with Bengali films or even Hindi films. But uh, uh, one like uh, Balika Badhu, if you, if you, if it rings a bell, Balika Badhu was actually based on a novel written by him. And Balika Badhu was made both in English, uh, sorry, both in Bengali as well as Hindi. Uh, then we have uh, another film called Boshanto Bilap, which was made in Bengali, Chuti. Uh, there was a film called Dillagi, made in Hindi with star Dharmendra and um, Hema Malini. Uh, and so w- what shows that his stories, you know, his, his stories have, uh, are, were perfect material for making films. But Bimalkar was someone who was not attracted by fame or money. Uh, you know, there was this instance where a producer from Bombay uh, booked hotel, uh, booked uh, uh, flight tickets and hotel tickets for him, but he refused to go by saying that you know if they want to want to come, they can come to Calcutta, but I won't go to Bombay. Okay, so uh, that is uh, what Bimalkar was like. Uh, then uh, he won the Sahitya Academy Award in 1975. He won the Sharad Chandra Award, which is uh, given by Calcutta University. Uh, he won Ananda Puraskar. Ananda Puraskar is actually one of the prestigious uh, awards uh, which is given to uh, writers every year. And he won that award twice. Okay, um, He had uh, a very kind of, uh, I mean, he worked in various fields. I mean, he worked in the railways and he wor- worked as an accounts officer, uh, a ticketing clerk and everything. But finally, uh, he found his calling in uh, being the editor of literary magazines. And he uh, went on to become the editor of one of the prestigious literary magazines called Desh. And he was the editor of that particular magazine for almost three decades. Okay. Uh, now, I'll, I'll tell you, uh, now when Subin actually suggested that I have to speak on Bimalkar, I asked him, you know, who suggested I thought uh, someone, you know, I mean, I was, like I said, I was surprised, you know, how come someone from Kerala is asking me to speak on uh, Bimal Kaur? Okay. And he said that a friend, another friend of his has suggested the name. So 
it 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 somehow I I got the idea that that means people in Kerala do a little. I I don't know how much the present generation is aware of Bimalkar, but uh, it gave me an idea that people in Kerala do know, you know, have heard his name. Uh, and uh, while doing my research on Bimalkar, uh, I actually came across something uh, written by Adur Gopalakrishnan. I'm sure most of you know him. So Adur Gopalakrishnan, in an essay. Uh, published in uh, Indian literature, which is uh, you know the Sahitya Academy jo- Journal, uh, he says uh, you know while talking about the literary influences during his adolescent years, he writes. So I'm just quoting what Adur Gopalakrishnan says. Happily, it was about the same time that we started translating from other Indian languages, particularly Bengali. You know, uh, Kerala and Bengal have always been culturally, socially, politically related. And we have many common interests, whether uh, you talk about politics, whether you talk about literature, whether you talk about culture, whether you talk about food, you know, we have, uh, whether you talk about cinema, uh, we have so many common interests. Okay. Uh, and so uh, he, here he's, uh, Adur Gopalakrishnan is talking about the literary influences. Uh, when he was growing up. So he says, happily, it was about the same time that we started translating from other Indian languages, particularly Bengali. So, you know, uh, what what was happening around that time that he's talking about is that uh, many Bengali works were being translated into Malayalam. You know? And uh, surprisingly, not many works of Bimalkar have been translated into English. I hardly found three or four novels and maybe uh, a few short stories that have been translated into English. But otherwise, you know, there's very little translation of Vimalkar done into English. So he's talking about, you know, uh, we started translating from other Indian languages, particularly Bengali. In our ardent admiration for anything Bengali, we even went beyond the best. But then it was for the good. Our writers could sense where they stood and what was in wanting, while the rest of the literators in India knew little of what was happening in Malayalam. We had been keeping watch on every movement, every achievement, every failure and inadequacy of our intellectual neighbors. So he considers uh, Bengalis as uh, the intellectual neighbors of uh, Malayalams. No wonder Bankim, Sharat Chandra, Bibhuti Bhushan, and Bimalkar had all become household names in Kerala. So you see how important Bimalkar, I mean, to be placing Bimalkar alongside writers like Bankim Chandra, Sharat Chandra, and Bibhuti Bhushan, you know, it's something very significant. So uh, someone as uh, reputed, as famous as Adur Gopalakrishnan and mentioning Bimalkar shows what uh, a prolific writer and how respected he is, you know, in Kerala. So uh, Bimalkar uh, was, you know, born in a village in uh, 24 Parganas, uh, then it was 24 Parganas in West Bengal. And most of his childhood was spent outside Bengal because of his father's job. Now, his father and even his uncles, they used to work in the railways and in the mining industry. Uh, uh, so he spent most of his childhood in Dhanbad, Hazaribha, Kulti, Asansol, and the coal belts of Bihar and present Jharkhand. Uh, his father's name was Jyotish Chandra Kaur and his mother was Nishibala Devi. He completed his primary education from uh, the railways primary school in Dhanbad and his secondary education from Dhanbad Academy. Now, uh, in those times, uh, ma- most Bengali families, they used to live in, in, in joint families. Okay, So he also you know, lived in a joint family. And while living in a joint family, he inculcated the values of love, generosity, togetherness and compassion. And... This love for family values, you know, it stayed on uh, with him till his last breath. And he was very kind of close to his family. There was a culture of reading literature in the Kaur family. So uh, by a very young age, Bimal had read most of the classics of 
Bengali literature and many beyond that. Uh, one of his aunts, uh, so everyone used to read, and so but then there was this one particular aunt, uh, uh, which in Bengali we say Shejo Kakima. Shejo Kakima is like it's almost like the third uh, aunt. Okay, so uh, this particular aunt, uh, she not only uh, inculcated this habit of reading, but she would rather also hold discussions on what they would read. Okay. And it was because of this that Bimal, uh, at a very young age, he used to, uh, you know, read these texts and these books very with a lot of attention. Okay, so uh, you know he he gave a lot of attention to the deeper aspects of the text. The family subscribed to a lot of monthly journals as well, which introduced Bimal to the modern trends in Bengali literature. There are several instances where his love of literature would land him in trouble. Once, after watching the play Meghnath Bodh, um, there is this play called Meghnath Bodh, uh, uh, the, the Sanskrit play, he thought of directing his own little play. So one fine afternoon, he got his friends to enact the play with himself in the lead role of Meghnath. As the war was at its peak, so there's a war in, in the play, and uh, so the war is at its peak with the clanging of metal strips and kitchen utensils. So for swords and, you know, he, he, used, he was using all these, like as, as kids we often do. So he was using these kitchen utensils and metal strips, you know, uh, and the war was going on. But what happened is that his mother, Mishibala, was woken up from her afternoon siesta. And then it is no secret you know, that who demolished or how Meghnath got demolished. On another occasion, just before appearing for his matric examination from Kulti Macmillan, Macmillan Institution, he was caught reading a Buddhadev Basu novel hidden inside his geometry textbook. As again, a lot, many of us do. We hide, you know, uh, comics and other storybooks or magazines inside our books. So he was just before his matric, his class 10th examination, he was, instead of doing his geometry, he was reading, uh, he was reading uh, Buddha Dev Bastu, uh, a Bengali novelist and writer. So, uh, which, which, which shows his, his love for, now these instances actually show his love for, uh, you can say, literature, reading literature. So, with a sol solid foundation in reading literature, Bimalkar came to Calcutta for higher studies. Now, this was a very life-changing moment in Bimalkar's life because all his, you know, all these years he was living outside. He was living in small towns, villages, and all these places. But, Cal but Calcutta was an eye-opener for him. You know, it somehow changed him as a human. Uh, it it showed him uh, more of, uh, you know, uh, the society because Calcutta at that time, uh, I'm talking about the 1930s, 40s. Okay, it was bustling with energy. The freedom movement was going on. Um, the, the, then you you could feel the effects uh, effects of the Second World War as well. So all these things were happening in Calcutta at that time, and all these uh, had a deep impact on his mind as a writer. So he came to Calcutta for higher studies. Interestingly, he took admission in Karmical Medical College, which is now Arjikar uh, Hospital. Uh, to study medicine, okay, but he was more interested in watching films featuring Greta Garbo, Marlene Dietrich, and Claudette Colbert. Or he used to spend his time watching the Calcutta theaters. You know, he used to go and watch plays. In literature, he got introduced to continental writers uh, like Anatole France and Ezra Pound, along with contemporary Bengali writers like Premendra Mitra, Manik Bandapadhyay. Sudhindranath Dotto and Jivananda Das. So, you know, he, his interests lie, lay elsewhere. So instead of studying medicine, he was doing all these things, watching films, watching theater, uh, reading books, okay, reading novels. So obviously his medical studies went nowhere. And then he was sent, so the, his, his family thought, okay, you can't do medical, go for engineering. So they sent him to engineering, to Sri Rampur Textile Engineering College. But he didn't like the subject at all. And finally, he graduated in arts from Vidya Saragar College, Calcutta. 
during his stay in Calcutta, Bimal Kaur was deeply aware of the events that were taking place in the world and in India. The Second World War, the atomic bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, the freedom movement, the riots in Calcutta, all these shaped Bimal Kaur's sensibility as a writer of contemporary times and values. He tried to present his contemporary times in his writings. In his novel, Dewal, Dewal means the wall. So I'm, I'm kind of just giving a literal translation. Um, so in his novel, Dewal, he has faithfully portrayed the period between mid-1941 to the end of 1945 which coincides with the Second World War, the freedom movement, the role of the Congress and Communist parties, the condition of people, all find a description in the novel. So he was he was someone, uh, Bimalkar was someone who was very much aware of his surroundings. You know, uh, uh, sometimes, um, like if we talk about Tagore, the critics of Tagore, they somehow feel that, you know, Tagore writings are far away from reality. Okay, yes, they have certain common themes that people may relate to, but somehow they do not portray reality. So there was this movement uh, against Tagore, you could say, okay, or against the Tagore school of writing, where these writers, they would kind of try to portray reality, stark the stark uh, naked reality. Okay, so Bimalkar was also one of those writers who, although initially he started writing, uh, you know, following Tagore and all the other great writers, but he charted his own kind of uh, path, okay, uh, as a writer. And uh, he was someone who was deeply kind of aware of his surroundings, uh, whether it was the social thing or, or you know, uh, the, the political environment. He used to write about these things. And so in his first novel, Dewal, he has, uh, you know, described the period between 1941 and 1945, as you know, uh, you know, uh, like uh, it coincides with the Second World War. The freedom movement was at its peak. Uh, and obviously, the because the Congress and the Communist parties played an important role in that, he has written about that. He has written about, uh, you know, the, the condition of people there was one more thing that was happening around that time, you know, uh, because uh, mm, uh, of the first impact of the First World War and because of the uh, pathetic economic conditions in rural Bengal, there were many people who were shifting to Calcutta and Calcutta was becoming overcrowded, you know, it was becoming very populous, there were too many people. But still, you know, the condition of people was not uh, improving. The, <coughs> the economic condition of people was not improving. There was still poverty, there was still misery, and all these things were there. Um, so, so Bimalkar faithfully portrayed these aspects of, of you know, people of Calcutta in, in this particular novel. The 1946 communal riots in Calcutta had a deep impact on the writers of that time. Bimalkar writes about it in his story, Onturi, in which a Hindu girl and a Muslim boy are forced to take shelter in a house without knowing the existence of each other. So, uh, like I said, you know, he was very much aware of uh, the, the, the contemporary events. So, uh, if, you, if you remember Indian history, then Calcutta was rocked by uh, communal riots uh, in 1946. And uh, he has written about that in, in the form of a story, which, uh, which is titled On Today. Uh, strangely enough, uh, no magazine in Calcutta agreed to publish it. And finally, it was, uh, you know, uh, uh, a magazine from Kashi, Uttar Pradesh, okay, which uh, uh, it's uh, the name of the magazine is Uttara. Uh, and uh, the editor of that magazine, he came and he took the story from Bimalkar and he published it, published it from Kashi. <clears throat> Uh, Bimalkar, <clears throat> you know, was someone who who was uh, very broad-minded, you know, as a as a reader and as a writer. So he used to read a lot of con uh, of continental uh, literature as well, uh, not just literature, but uh, even he was very much in interested 
by Sigmund Freud's uh, writings on the human mind, on human psychology. And uh, that gets reflected in his writings as well. So Sigmund Freud's inquiries into the human mind and its workings had a major effect on many Bengali writers. And Bimal Khan was also one of them. Exploring and probing into the human mind is a common theme in many novels and short stories of Bimalkar. He attained a distinct mark in character analysis and portrayal of situation. His quest is for the inner world. He draws his characters mostly from middle class intellectuals who move, feel and suffer inwardly. His characters are continuously torn by a peculiar fear, sense of alienation, and a typical complexity. So this is one more thing that Bimalkar uh, is known for. Uh, again, if you look at most of the Bengali novels that were being written about time, uh, about that around that time, uh, most of these novels were very kind of you could say you know uh, like. You could, you could go back to the 18th century and 19th century English novels, uh, which were very social in nature. You know, they were not like psychological in nature. It is only when we come to, to D.H. Lawrence and uh, all these uh, Henry James that, you know, uh, the, the focus of the novel shifted. And uh, Bimalkar was also kind of influenced by writers like D.H. Lawrence and, you know, all these other continental writers who were again influenced by Sigmund Freud's, uh, you know, uh, readings of the mind. Uh, so uh, his his characters are, uh, you know, so when, when he, his character portrayals are very psychological in nature, you know. So it's not like objective in nature. They are very much subjective in nature. In the initial years of his writing career, Bimalkar followed the style of writers he had grown up reading like Tagore and Buddha De Basu, but with his attitude towards life changing and his personal feelings becoming wider, he developed his own style. So like I already said that, you know, when he started his writing career, he, he was following the writers, uh, the great writers of the time, like Tagore and Buddha De Basu. As he himself says, at first, so I'm quoting him, you know, what he is, he, he's talking about his own, writing style, the shift, you know, in his own writing style. At first, I felt there really was no difference between existence and non-existence, except materially, as was manifest in my early novels. But later, I started feeling there were, that there was also in this material world of hatred, frustration and problems, some love, warmth and sincerity. So although one might say that his first novel, Dewal, is somewhat nihilistic, <coughs> just a second. So although one might say that his first novel, Dewal, is somewhat nihilistic, as it describes the effects of the Second World War on a Bengali family, his later novel, Purno Apurno, which again, if you translate it, it becomes complete incomplete, speaks of the necessity of trying for perfection in life and society. Carr rightly maintains that there should be an earnest endeavor to reach towards perfection, or else the individual will find himself surrounded by multiple problems and feel frustrated and alienated. Even his Sahitya Academy winning novel, so uh, like I said that he won the Sahitya Academy Award in 1975 and it was for the novel Oshomoy. Okay. <coughs> Even his Sahitya Academy winning novel Oshomoy delves deep into the cross-currents in a young man out to destroy tradition and his elders who find solace in keeping to the old values and norms. Bimalkar refused to identify himself with any modernist trend. Even a modern theme like alienation to him 
existed during the writing of the Mahabharata. Now, we, you know, we have this tendency to categorize the writers who were writing around that time uh, in the 1940s, 50s, 60s as uh, modernist writers or modern writers. But Bimalkal was someone who resisted this categorization, you know. Um, and he said that, you know, uh, modern, like even uh, Mahabharat is modern because uh, if, if you say that alienation is one of the themes of modernist literature, then uh, alienation was there in Mahabharata also. And he gives the example of Bidur in, uh, uh, in Mahabharata. And uh, he says that, uh, you know, how Bidur was alienated from his own family members. Just give me a second. Yes. So he uh, refused to identify himself with any modernist trend. Um, modernity to him is understanding of life with all its attendant virtues and evils. And as such, the human relationship has to be probed very deeply. Okay, so according to him, uh, you know, so, so modernism is not something that you can put in a time frame. Modernism, you can be modern at any point of uh, any point of time. Okay. Uh, one very common motive that we find in Bimalkar's writings is death. You know, uh, he was deeply, um, you know, affected by death, and uh, it has very valid reasons. Because at a very young age, he lost his two-year-old sister. You know, uh, in front of his eyes, he saw his sister. She was playing, and she just fell on the ground, and she died. Then, uh, before when he was, uh, you know, uh, when he was around fourteen or fifteen, he lost his grandmother, who was very dear to him. And then again, he lost his father to a cerebral stroke. So all these kind of sudden deaths, you know, they they had a had a deep impact on Bimalkar's mind. And uh, so death, you know, in various ways, it 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 uh, keeps on repeating in his in his works. Okay. But then when you say that, you know, uh, so then is he um, a nihilistic writer? Uh, I would say that no, he's not at all, you know, he's not all nihilistic. Yes, there is an element of depression. He does talk about death. He does harp on death. Uh, but then uh, he's not all nihilistic. Uh, there is a silver lining of hope, uh, you know, for, for the future as well. So... Uh, uh, I would just like to kind of uh, end uh, this uh, uh, kind of uh, just to show, you know, that he was actually uh, how optimistic he was. I would just like to quote him. It, it was written in Bengali, so I, I just translated him. So he says, after all, we all started from zero. Now we have come to nine. Okay, so he says that we have all started from zero and now we have come to like taking one, two steps each. We have come to nine. We will expect zero, the next zero, not the zero of the beginning, but the zero of the end. Okay, so, you know, even when we are, uh, he's saying that, you know, even when we are expecting a zero, um, it's not the zero of the beginning, but rather the zero of the future. So, which, which shows that, you know, he is, uh, there is a kind of sense of optimism in his writings. Okay. So, thank you very much. Uh, I think uh, I've ended whatever I had to say on Bimalkar. Um, it's a short one. Short but good. Yes, uh, Actually, uh, Bimilka is known to Malayalis, uh, especially when he got the Nobel, Pri I mean, Sahitya Academy Prize in 1975. And the work, Asame, is translated uh, into Malayalam. And it's actually, it is available here. Okay. Uh, and uh, it is uh, translated by Leela Panik, uh, forgot, yeah, Leela Sarkar. Okay. And it is DC Books who published 
you know uh, that particular work mm-hmm. and it is there so you know uh, it, it's no it, it was uh, like i was very kind of uh, i mean whatever i research i did on bimal kar i was very kind of surprised to know that you know he hasn't been translated in english that much maybe a few short stories and uh, just two or three novels uh, have been translated and i am not sure if even oshamay has been translated into english um, although some of his other novels have been translated into english um, so yes um, so i think uh, it was very kind of Uh, kind of you generous of you to include him in this list of fabulous 14 yeah uh, for us when we thought of uh, uh, the people who were born in 1921 we had a list actually there are a lot of people who were born uh, and we were particular uh, that you know we have to select uh, you know if some people or from indian mm-hmm. satyatra of course satyatra is there there's yes. no question about satyatre then arke lakshman right so uh, and the next two actually was uh, one is sahir ludian v mm-hmm. and the other is bimalkar and why we chose bimalkar is that as a writer uh, he is not simply a novelist right mm-hmm. and he, there are uh, people who tells that who tell that bimalkar is best when he writes short stories exactly he is a he is a prolific short writer short story writer short story writer so yeah. there are that is two aspects of him so when we say we celebrate the multifaceted people and also he has written dramas uh just one drama two, two dramas one or two okay two dramas okay then Uh, he has written children uh, literature yes so uh, like i mentioned uh, detective stories mostly these detective stories yeah so he is a versatile writer yes. you know i'll i'll tell you something uh, interesting you know since uh, i'm not sure how much uh, how how like uh, much of it about it you know uh, in bengal you know most of the writers if you see you know uh, they are kind of they have to actually be multifaceted i'll tell you why in bengal there is this culture of magazines literary magazines and you know these literary magazines they cater to particular age groups you know like say uh, something like desh like i like where <laughs> bimal kar walk for almost three decades uh, it it caters to you know so it's it's kind of elitist in nature you know like for people who are kind of, who think they are very kind of they have a literary sensibility a high literary sensibility they read desh so it it's a kind of a, a status symbol to Uh, you know read desh okay uh, then there is um, anando mala which is a children's uh, so uh, right now we are the we are we are going to have the pujas and uh, before the pujas we have these annual uh, issues of these uh, magazines so and these are not magazines these are like thick digests okay so they some of them even have short novellas published in these in these books so they have novels and these short stories and uh, obviously so when you are writing for children's uh, magazines like these so you have to be kind of the versatile okay uh, if you are actually living on you know uh, as a writer okay if you are earning as a writer so you have to write adult literature you have to write children's literature so this is something you, you, that you find not only in bimalkar but many other like chishendu mukhopadhyay sunil ganguly you know all these writers who especially started writing from the 1970s 80s you know all these years when these kinds of magazines actually flourished okay so bengal still has a kind of a, a strong reading culture uh, because of which you know these writers they they always uh, write for these magazines okay and that is how bimal kar also wrote so many kind of uh, short stories and most of the short stories they used to be published in these uh, magazines later on they were published as collections of stories as books but initially most of these stories and even now many writers uh, they publish they first publish the novels in serial form you know there is a in in bengal there is still the culture of writing a novel in serial form so you know if, if there's a monthly kind of a magazine you you'll have to you know if you want to read the novel you'll have to buy every issue okay so that is how they uh, you know they keep the readers hooked okay so that is uh, so yes so that is what i was trying to say that you know so if you are a writer in bengal 
you kind of have to be a bit versatile look okay? otherwise you you can't be you know unidimensional okay uh because again you know people uh, they they do, they don't really go and buy books uh, as such okay so they you usually buy these magazines and they read through these magazines yes uh, you know uh, i was also uh, one wondering when adru gobalakrishnan when you caught uh, adru gobalakrishnan so there is a lot of similarity between kerala and bengal yes, so sir. right now you are telling that there are literary magazines which create a kind of literary circle and uh, literary production there in kerala also it's the same we have uh, madhubhumi then uh, bhasha bhoshini madhyamam so these are the kind of literary magazines which mm. creates uh, you know uh, which makes you aware of uh, the movements literary movements and also you find a uh, text uh, novels published in serial forms then you mm. have stories short stories then uh, poems and all you know recently it was uh, sara joseph's works for example it is published in uh, madhubumi so this is the similarity actually there is yes. not yes 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 others Mr. Pakistan, want to ask any question? We can ask. How many of uh, the students might have heard the name of Bhimal Kaur? Or you know, uh, because I, I can assure that if I go and ask in my classroom, uh, I you know I would hardly find anyone who would say that, sir, I have read Bhimal Kaur. Uh, I'm not sure how many of your students must have read Bhimal Kaur as well. I shall ask them. Is there anybody? who has read asamayam <laughs> i don't think so but you know this is uh, the intention behind this program exactly people like him has to be commemorated yes so that is the intention so people will right now people will search for this book at least they have yeah. heard then no, even if the if not the novel maybe short stories i'm not sure if the short stories have been translated into english i mean uh, there is one short story that has been translated and uh, if uh, I, i can send it to you and you can share it with the students yes uh, i i saw i sahib's daughter uh, okay. it's it's a short story which has been translated uh, i can send it to you and you can share it with the students sure, uh, yeah so that is there Uh, so uh, does anyone have a question on bimal ka okay i don't think they have any questions yes okay i think uh, since you know um, he is not that familiar to the students yes yes Okay. Thank you, sir, for your talk on Bimalka. Uh, many of us might not be familiar with Bengali. Uh, uh, many of us might only be familiar with Bengali writers like Tagore and some others. But you introduced us to such a great writer, uh, someone who, as you said, was very aware of his surroundings. So thank you so much for this talk, sir. Thank you so much again. Thank you, Subin. and uh, thank you see you yeah i'll take your leave now uh, i have to go for a meeting again okay 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 uh, thank you yeah. participants uh, we will gather for the next session next talk is on cyprian equency we will gather at uh, 11:30